Good evening, your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here, and I must give honor to those to whom honor is due, first of all, uh, the First Lady of Kwara State. You're very welcome, ma. A delivery are in a Korea, Kuya, if you. Eva Nikio, Gaiva Deliu, First Lady of Kwara. Having done that, ladies and gentlemen, please, I'd also like you to help me welcome the first lady of my life, my wife, Toby. She's here. Very wonderful lady. Hence, I married her. But she deceived me. I will explain. Actually, my job is to introduce firstborn. But I just want to bear my mind first. I don't do this often again. Television doesn't allow. But so when I get the opportunity... My parents did something I didn't like. Everything in my life is perfect. But I would have liked to be a bit taller. And I blame my parents. My father, before he died, was five feet five inches. I'm five seven. My father was like this to me. You would have thought before he married, ma, he would think of children. Love is not enough. You have to think generationally. You would have thought he would marry a woman taller than him. My father opened his two eyes with glasses, making four. The only person he saw was my mom, four feet, five inches. So this was the product. So when I wanted to get married, ma, because of my children, I thought of the future. So I looked for a girl that was not so taller than I was taller, but not so taller. I didn't know it was deception. While she was dating me, this girl wore flat slippers to my house all the time. A real height. Until the wedding day. You know how you stand with the pastor and the bride is walking. When she got to my side, for the first time, I saw her in heels. You don't understand how embarrassing it is for your wife to wear heels when you go out. It's like, I'm a younger brother. But you don't even know how emasculating it is in the house when your wife is taller than you. I grew up knowing that it's the man in the house that takes things in the cupboard where the wife cannot reach. Do you know how embarrassing it is when I have to call my wife to come and help me take things on top of the cupboard? Do you know how embarrassing when the light burns? Say, Toby, John, Toby, I don't have any change, you know. You, you have no idea. And before I got married, I, look, if not that I met this girl, I wanted to marry a white girl. White people. White people do some things that I like. For example, white people are very brave. I like that part. Look, the way Nigeria is going, you need a brave wife. So I wanted to marry a brave white woman. If you watch television, you'll understand. Brave. They always go to places where black people never go. If anything happens now and it comes on your phone, anywhere in the world, God forbid, maybe a bomb or earthquake or even good news. When you get home and you want to confirm, what is the television station you put it on? CNN, Abby, or Sky, or BBC, or Al Jazeera. Because they are brave. I remember one time when one bomb happened in India, I was at home. CNN came on without their uh, tune. Bang, 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 bang. Good evening, you're welcome to CNN World News. My name is Anderson Cooper. First, the main headlines. There was a flood in India, Bombay. Over to correspondent Sally Knott in India. They took us to the flood. She was there, wet. Rain was falling. Hey, hello Anderson, this is Sally here in Bombay. The flood is going on. If you look in the building near me, we're trying to rescue people. As she was talking, an explosion went off. Boof! The camera fell down. Boogo! She went down. Can you hear me, Arthur? Can you hear me, Arthur? Another bomb just went off in the building. The flood is causing a lot of problems. You know what's going to happen? Now I'm going to go inside the building that was just bombed. She went inside the building that was just bombed. Then I changed to NTA. Just to catch up. And so the song came to. Good evening. You're welcome to the network news at nine. My name is. Cyril Stoba. <laughs> and now to the main headlines. There was a flood and a bomb in India. 
And now we take you live and direct to correspondent Minasara Ilo reporting the bombing live from London. Over to you, Minasara. We saw Minasara in London standing in front of Buckingham Palace wearing white and white starched. Uh, thank you very much, Cyril. Uh, Cyril has reported uh, there's been a bombing and flooding in India. I'm reporting live here from London. Uh, if you look at the television screen behind me, the CNN correspondent just went inside. A bomb has gone off. Oh my God, we'll keep you in touch when she comes out. Back to you, Cyril Stoba. You know, I wanted to marry a white girl, but uh, I love my wife. Uh, wonderful girl. Uh, I can't wait for the children to come. I've taken my time to plan for them. Because the way I'm seeing children these days, I don't understand anymore. These children are all of a sudden too sharp, too wise, all in the name of private school. I went to a friend's house recently who was a pastor. One of my friends, pastor, they invited us to lunch, myself and Toby, he and his wife. They have one daughter. When I got to their house, I noticed that they were setting a small table in the corner. I mean, they were setting the normal table like this. Then they were setting a very small table in the corner. So I asked, I said, ah, Mrs. Pastor, who can eat on this small table? She said, it's our daughter. At seven years old, she's very rude now. The teacher has been complaining. So her punishment is that she will eat facing the wall. <laughs> so she won't eat. It's just the direction that is in question. No problem. So it was time to eat. We sat down, four adults, myself, Toby, Pastor, Mrs. Pastor. Pastor said grace. Father, we thank you for this meal. Keep on providing for us in Jesus' name. Before we started eating, Tokwe answered from the corner, saying our own prayer. And she said it loudly so that all of us could hear. Father, I thank you for preparing a table for me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> Can you beat her? It's what they taught her. She's a pastor's daughter. How can? <laughs> I remember those days when I was growing up. Anytime we wanted to go out. I grew up in those days where Michael Jackson was reigning when uh, Yvonne Chaka Chaka was. Thank you, Mr. DJ. Wait, wait. I was going to talk another joke before, but this thing you have done. You poor are old, though. Let's test your age first so that the people beside you will know how old you are. Let's test. There's always a way to know how old you are. If you can sing any of these songs and the person beside you cannot, the person beside you should start calling you bros. Please don't be ashamed to show your age. Can we have a dance together? Pa -na -na -pa -na -pa -na. The sun, the sea together. Pa -pa -na -pa -na. You two can dance together. Lime me lemon eating together. All you need is to drink. Lime and lemon you drink. All you need is to drink. Lime and lemon you drink. You are here. No, that one is recent. Maybe you remember. You cannot remember. Let me give you another one. Some of you will feel this. Some of you will feel this. I am the future of the world. I am the hope of my nation. Ah. <laughs> Some of you don't know it because you didn't have television that time. Uh, television wasn't so popular. But there's one I used to cut to you. This one is for the oldest people here. Most of you won't know it. Hey, joy girl, you can help the looks you get. Look around, all the girls can help us stop a glee. I think go alone. <laughs> do I still have time? That joke was, uh, do I have like a few minutes? I'm not sure I do. Okay, let me stop joking around and uh, bring up the person I'm supposed to. Do I have a few minutes? I'm getting into the groove. Not be my show. Uh, first of all, I apologize. Uh, don't vex, not my show. Uh, before I bring him on, uh, I know it's about uh, 7.30. Uh, can we all synchronize our time pieces to, to be 7.30? It's 7.30. It's a comedy show. Uh, the man of the show, the man of the moment, the man for whom we're gathered is about to come onto the stage. 
And while I know that uh, you have honored us by being here, you know, it's not very good that your phones be ringing and disturbing your neighbors. On the other hand, you were the ones who honored us. So it's a conundrum. How do we ask you now to not answer your phone? Therefore, we have broken all phone owners into two categories, please, if you're here. Category number one. If you're here and you bought your handset for 150,000 naira and above, you are a big boy, you are a big girl, big daddy, big money. We dare not ask you to switch off such an expensive piece of technology. So we beg you, in your bigness, put it on silent or vibrate. You have earned the right at 150 to answer that phone on silent. However, if you're here, this same hall, and you bought your phone for 30,000 naira or below, you have no rights in this life or in the kingdom to come. With all due respect, please switch it off. We don't know how it works, but the cheapest phones have the loudest ringtones. By some irony, the cheaper the phone, you must have noticed. Especially some that come from China that do everything. They don't last more than four months. But in those four months, you'll enjoy everything. Television, radio, internet, YouTube, Facebook. I saw one last week washing machine on the phone. 